I imagine one major reason that many of you are in college is because you want a better job and to be able to make more money over your lifetime. Now, then one question arises, how much more can a college graduate make on average than someone without a college degree? Or even uh, someone with a college degree versus some college. Say if you stop now, relative to if you finished, how much more um, are you, or would you make? Um, or how much less would you make if you stop now? So one way to do this is to look at the average income for college graduates and um, high school graduates. We can do this with the American Community Survey, which is um, a replacement for the long form of the census. This is a survey that is actually mandatory for people to fill out. Um, not everybody does this. It's a, a random sample of people taking the census. It's very large. They interview 3 million people in 2010. I think believe about that number in 2011. Um, we here here we have the data that I've posted are a subset for New Jersey. It's a very large sample though. You can see if you press Control down arrow, there's 67,743 people who took part in this sample. Some of them are part of the same uh, household, and you can see we have a wage and salary income variable. And we also have educational attainment. We have some other variables that we're going to use to filter out people that um, we're not looking at. The first thing to do, of course, is to press Control T to create a, a table or data table. Make sure that my table as headers is checked off because we do have variable names in the header or first row of the table. Excel converts it to a data table. We can name that table ACS, American Community Survey. And then I can come up here and, as usual, press Summarize with Pivot Table. Now, you can also get to the Pivot Table by clicking on Insert Pivot Table and go to the same place. Press OK. Because the data set's a little big, it might take a few seconds to get to the Pivot Table feature. Now here we're in the uh, versatile Pivot Table feature, and you can see there's a list of variables on the right, all of our variables. and first thing I want to do is take that wage and salary income variable, drag and drop it to the values box because this is the variable that I'm um, focused on. It starts out with a sum with this massive billions or trillions of dollars. We want the average rather than the sum and one way to change that is clicking on the summarize values by box um, up here this button and choosing average or you can always right click on the value itself and choose summarize values by average and here we're getting a number of 35,598. We can change, format this in dollars by going back to the home menu and pressing on the dollar sign like that. So we have now an average for everybody. This is really not that meaningful because it includes a lot of people who are not working, retired people and unemployed people and then people who are too young or um, otherwise just not in the labor force. But we're not gonna focus on that now. We'll get to that later filtering those people out. First, uh, we want to look at these incomes by education. So I can grab the education attainment variable, drag and drop it to the row value labels. Now we have average income by level of education and these educational attainment numbers are not in a great order and there's way too many of them. What we really want is smaller number of categories and we wanted them s sorted in a logical order from less to more otherwise it's just too much too busy and too much information here so I'm going to show you one way we can sort and group categories in a pivot table it's simple when you get the hang of it I'm going to start with this NA or no schooling category that's going to be the very lowest category and to put that at the bottom what I can do is highlight it like I've done press control X to cut it from where it is and then go to the bottom there and paste it by pressing Control V. And now it pastes it at the bottom. And when it does that, it also changes the numbers here that correspond. So if I undo that and show you again, you can see, if you focus on the numbers, the numbers switch places as well. Um, nursery school to fourth grade is the, the next logical step up. And the next step after that would be grade five, six, seven, or eight. So I'm going to 
highlight that, press Control X, and then Control V to place it where it uh, belongs in logical order. Grade 9 is in the right place. I want to cut and paste grade 10 and do the same thing with grade 11. And moving up one year of college, be after grade 12, two years of college, and four years of college, like that. So now these categories are finally um, sorted in the right way. Um, it's interesting to see that as someone with a, who had a grade 9 education seemed to be making a little bit more than someone with grade 10. We don't want to make too much of this because, um, remember, this is a random survey, so, or I'm sorry, this is a, this is a random sample. Um, it's a sample, not the population. If we looked in the entire population, these things might be different. Uh, there might not be that many people, for example, in this category. So if we redid the sample, uh, if they did read the sample, they might get a different result. But putting that aside, the other thing what we want to do is to group these into a smaller number of more um, understandable categories that seem to fit together. And this is pretty simple to do. So for example, if I want to code up everybody who has less than high school education, I can highlight those categories, which would be no schooling up through grade 8, right click, and then select group. And now it's going to group those together. So this group 1 includes these three groupings. Okay. Um, I'm going to call that less than high school. And now I want to have some high school, the next grouping is going to be some high school without the actual degree. So I can highlight these grades 9 through 11, right click, group, this becomes group 2 and I'm going to rename it some high school, like that. Grade 12 I want to stand on its own because um, there's a lot of people who graduate high school and don't go on further, so I'll call that high school degree one year and two years of college I would call some college. I'm going to highlight one year and two year of college, right click and group. And I'll call that some college. Four years of college, in this case is a college degree. Some people finish their college degree after more or fewer years, but in this, uh, the way the census captures this information, they just code it into four years for a college degree. And five or more years is someone with a graduate degree, like that. So now here I've coded these up into a smaller number of more um, logical um, set of categories. And as I've done this, you should notice that in the field list, and we can see this more clearly if I make it larger, Excel has created a second variable that it's calling educational attainment general version 2 based on the original educational attainment. This new variable, which is only going to appear in the pivot table, not in your actual data, is this, this new variable is this one with these new groupings that we've created. And so what I really want to see is just those new groupings. I don't want to see the the groupings within them and so I take to, to get rid of the smaller um, groupings I can grab that original variable and drag it back to the list and then it goes away okay and now I'm left with a series of average wage and salary income by education now this is actually a little misleading because these numbers include people who are unemployed, they include people who are much older and are not working. So we really need to filter out some of those people. And to do that, first I want to filter out only the people who worked last year much of the time. So I'm going to take this week's work last year variable drag and drop it to the report filter and then select the drop down menu select multiple items we have all and I'm going to select only people who worked at least 48 weeks out of the 52 weeks last year press OK now the numbers go up because 
a lot of the people in the sample are people who weren't working for whatever reason. They're a lot of retired, unemployed, or otherwise not in the labor force people. So that's the first thing we're going to filter on there. The next thing I want to filter on is age. I want to include only the working age population um, here. I'm going to take the, grab the age variable, drag it to the report filter, and then again go to the drop down menu, on select multiple items, and then I'm going to deselect people who are under the age of 25. And then I'm going to also deselect people who are over the age of 65. Unfortunately, there's no fast way to do this within the pivot table. I'm going to take out by deselecting people who are over the age of 65. And now the numbers may go up slightly like they've done here. And now we can see that the average income for someone with a graduate degree in, and this is a 2010 survey, so it's for focusing on probably the year 2009, for people who worked that year and were between the ages of 25 and 65, their average income was $111,567. And people with a college degree, um, who had, uh, that was their highest level of education, their average income was $81,369. Um, right away we can see the difference between someone with a college degree and someone with a high school degree is absolutely massive. Um, people with a high school degree were making an average of $43,536, round up to $537. Whereas the college degree people were making perhaps almost double that. Now the next thing we do after you get that kind of information, what we want to do is we want to look at this separately by gender. And um, it's not a good idea to put multiple va um, variables in the rows. And we can see why that's a bad idea. If I take gender, drop it in the rows, this is way too busy of a table. It's, I suppose, readable, but not, not so great looking. So I'm going to undo that. Instead, this is what columns are for. If we have a second variable, we want to look at averages by. So I take the sex variable, drop it in the columns box, column labels box, and now I'm getting average income by education and by gender. And now I see that women with a graduate degree made an average of $85,000 versus the men were much higher at 132000 and the grand total is just the average between them. And same thing, um, see, uh, women with a college degree made an average $62,000 and men made an average of $97,000. Um, and again, the grand total is for both men and women. Now, one might say, well, maybe one reason why the gap between men and women in income is so large is because men are more likely to work full time. So we can filter out people who weren't working, working full time. If I take the usual hours worked last week, and the, the point of this is to compare men and women who are the same in this, if I drop the usual hours per week into the filter uh, report filter and then I select only people who are working at least 35 hours and again this is kind of annoying because unfortunately Excel did not provide a very simple or quick way to do this but if I'm only selecting people who worked at least 35 hours a week, then I'm getting people who are definitely full-time workers. And what that does is allows me to compare apples to apples more. Um, if somebody would say, well, maybe 
the part of the gender gap is because men and women, uh, men are more likely to work full time than women are. So I do that, and we should we could see that um, the incomes probably go up more for women than men. If I undo that, you can see the average income for women with a college degree went from 62.6 to 68.7, and men it also increased, but not as much, and that's partly because of more women working full time that we just filtered out of the data set. Um, but we're still we still see there's a pretty big gap. Um, I wouldn't even say pretty big. It's a it's a large gap between men and women at all stages here of of education. Now I want to show you one additional feature of pivot tables and in the process show you how to get say the median of uh, say a man with a college degree work last year full time and for women. One nice feature about the pivot table is if you click on any of the values double click on them Excel will create a sheet separate sheet in the workbook with only those people that meet, that meet those criteria. So if I click on this 100,000 here, Excel will create a sheet for college educated men with all of these um, characteristics. So I double click on that, created a new sheet here. It's probably going to be a different sheet number in yours, it doesn't matter. Um, it already created a table there and here are the 4,354 men who met this, those criteria and that's the average of their income is being calculated on these numbers here. Now let's say for example we could say that we want to look at the median of the of the income there as in addition to just the average. So we have the average is $100,155 but say we wanted to look at the median. Remember income is usually skewed to the right what that means is that there are a small number of people making a lot of money um, and those really rich people skew the income distribution and they um, push the mean above the median. So to get the median of this variable, this is remember just for the wage and salary income of men with a college degree, I can use a formula right here as equals and actually I should check what this table is called table tools this is called table 4 okay so I'm going to refer to it that way say equals median and then I'm going to refer to table 4 Excel helps me out by listing it there and then in brackets I'm going to select the variable that I want which is wage and salary income double click that close bracket and then close parenthesis and now I'm getting the median for just income among men with a college degree which turns out to be actually quite a bit lower than this hundred thousand and that makes sense because as I said the mean is very often with income is pushed way above the median by those rich people at the top. Now let's do the same thing for women with a college degree. If I double click on the 68,776, I'm going to get all of the women who ca who could be categorized as, you know, ages 25 to 65 working at least 47 weeks last year and at least 35 hours a week who had a college degree. Double click on that. So these are the college educated women. There's 3,350 of them in this data set. And I'm going to do the same thing here. The name of this table, if you click on table tools, it's called table five. And I'm going to get the median for table five and wage and salary income within table five, close bracket, close parenthesis and now, now there's the median there. So the median income for women is 60,000 of college educated women working full time 
2009 was $60,000, which is $20,000 less than the median for men.